Art is unquestionably one of the most prevalent substances that makes up any culture. Modern art alone has at least 10 unique movements identified by the Encyclopedia Britannica from futurism all the way to constructivism. However, today we aren't delving into modern art. In fact, we are going to be so removed from modernism that we will be entering as far back as the later years of the Stone Age. Incredibly, even our most distant ancestors were flexing their creative muscles, making time for artistic binging between hunting for food and bragging about their cave era body count. As we all know, a picture is worth a thousand grunts. Let's have a look at four fascinating ancient art sites from each continent, excluding Antarctica. I couldn't find any info on that civilization because NASA clearly wants to brainwash the masses for financial gain or something. Africa, the loving mother of humanity, the second largest continent after Asia, the resting place of the glorious Library of Alexandria, the soft sandy scenery where the largest subtropical desert is stationed, the Sahara, the setting of Walt Disney's The Lion King, and also the birthplace of Elon Musk. This is where our journey will begin today. Tassili Najer, a plateau in Algeria within the central Sahara. Here, there are rock paintings that date back to around 5000 or 6000 BCE. The artwork was possibly first discovered in 1910. However, unique sources will give you varying years, such as 1933. It is flooded with over 15,000 drawings and depicts the social lives of early people, animal taming, migrations, climate changes, fauna, and extinct animals like the giant buffalo. Tassili Najer is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that covers an area of just about 45,000 square miles, or over 70,000 square kilometers. The art here primarily addresses the relationship between man and nature, a bond that our species is still struggling with to this day. Ancient people or modern, we all seem to face similar problems. Let's jump to Drakensburg, South Africa, to the Ukalamba Drakensburg World Heritage Site in KwaZulu-Natal. Discovered over 300 years ago, this ancient site has been in use since at least 1000 BCE. It hosts paintings of people and animals where numerous materials were mixed to liven the stones with shades of yellow, red, black, and white. The brushes used by ancient people here were made from animal hairs or bird feathers stuck into thin reeds, impressively not too far off from what we still use today. In the past, people visiting Drakensburg would toss water on the paintings to make them easier to see when photographing them. Malicious intent or not, the practice damaged the precious site and today, it is strictly forbidden to make any kind of contact with the paintings. Engravings can also be found here made from sharp stones or other hard materials. Sadly, it's time to leave South Africa and head for Somalia to the Las Giel Caves. While not necessarily a recent discovery considering the locals knew about the caves, it wasn't professionally explored until 2002. This place is very well preserved due to the dry climate and it dates back to around 3000 BCE, and some archaeologists believe it could even be twice that old. Portraits of animals litter the caves. Here you can find camels, wild dogs, antelopes, giraffes, and cows, but there are also people on the walls. Depictions of the cattle show them with strangely wide necks, and for the moment, the best explanation we have is that some form of ornament was draped over their necks, 
possibly for ceremonial purposes. Interestingly, the paintings of dogs, which happen to be the most common animal portrayed, show people beside them. Could this point to companionship? Or something else? We may never truly know for sure. We conclude our African expedition with arguably the most famous country on the continent, Egypt. Located near the Libyan border at the Gilt Kabir Plateau in Wadi Sura, the Cave of Swimmers was discovered in 1933. Dating back to about 6000 BCE, or possibly even before that, the cave presents paintings of mysterious figures which appear to be on their stomachs, either swimming or maybe even falling. Besides people, the cave also features giraffes, handprints, and an engraving of an antelope's hoof print. I didn't even know hoof print was a word before today. A theory buzzing around this cave suggests that the depictions of the swimming people could point to a change in climate of the Sahara region from a temperate zone to a desert one. Any Harry Potter fans in the audience? Rafe Fiennes, the actor who plays Voldemort, stars in a film called The English Patient, where he plays Laszlo Almashi, a real-life author who wrote a book translated as The Unknown Sahara, where he dedicated a whole chapter to the Cave of Swimmers. It might be a few degrees of separation, but it's there. In addition, Naveen Andrews, who you may know as Saeed from Lost, also stars in the movie. And lastly, the living legend Willem Dafoe is featured as well. Wow, the more you know. Anyways, let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. Asia, a land mesmerizingly vast and culturally rich with iconic landmarks such as the Himalayan mountains, submerged cities with incredibly well-preserved architecture, the Great Wall of China, which spans over 13,000 miles in length, which is nearly 22,000 kilometers, and historic finds such as the Terracotta Army, which shook the artistic world to its very bones. Let's start in Kyrgyzstan. To be specific, Semalu Tosh in the valleys of the inner Tian Shan. The rock art here dates back over 2,000 years and shows a wide range of artistic venture. Local wildlife are portrayed on the basaltic rock, as well as humanoid figures with animal-like features. There are also ritualistic dances of demons, as well as the migration of animals. This region has the largest concentration of petroglyphs in Central Asia, which sits at an altitude of nearly 10,000 feet, or over 3,000 meters. Around 90,000 individual specimens exist in the area, and unsurprisingly, the art covers many different styles. A common theme amongst the petroglyphs are geometric shapes, and authors who write about the Semalu Tosh all seem to deem it as culturally significant. The next entry is much older than the last, and it's in Madhya Pradesh, India. It's called the Bimbetka Rock Shelters, and there are about 500 out of the total 750 plus locations decorated with ancient paintings, some of which date back around 30,000 years. Discovered in the late 1950s, the Bimbetka paintings are primarily colored red and white. The scenes drawn show hunting, animal domestication, dancing, and local wildlife from tigers to elephants to lizards. A sad truth, however, is that the majority of the rock shelters are inaccessible to travelers. This part of India is a very hilly region reaching up to about 2,000 feet, or 600 meters. A mysterious spectacle at one of the shelters depicts a large red bison charging into or attacking a character. The fascinating part about this drawing is that it can only be viewed when the sun hits it just right. Was this done on purpose? There's no way to know for sure. Indonesia is home to some of the oldest paintings in the world. 
Our first stop in Indonesia is at the Maros and Pankep regions on an island called Sulawesi. Discovered in the 1950s, some of the handprints here date back nearly 40,000 years. The caves seem to catalog the animals that the ancients came across, and some archaeologists believe that the handprints may have been the people's way of contacting a more spiritual state. One of the more awe-inspiring pictures you'll find here is of a wild pig deer known as a babarusa. The detail in the painting is such that even today, the gender of the deer, which is female, is clear to us. The specific area where the paintings are found are known as the Karst Caves, and the images here are thought to be some of the oldest figurative art in the world. Borneo is the third largest island on Earth. It's also where explorers found some of the oldest art we know of, which dates back 40,000 years. The caves where the art was found seemed to be relatively empty, suggesting that the ancients mainly came here to vent their artistic urges rather than to inhabit them. Not only that, but the caves sit above dense vegetation, and reaching them surely would have been a perilous journey. The art here depicts local animals, human figures, and handprints. A unique twist on the handprints, however, is that the people who created the art would tattoo over where the bare skin would have been to decorate the handprints. This may suggest that the tradition of tattooing may be much older than 6,000 years, as we currently believe it to be. South America, residency to the largest rainforest on Earth, the Amazon etched and dominated by the world's longest mountain range, the Andes. Sitting closer to Antarctica than any other continent and hosting some of the most bizarre yet intriguing builds in all of the Western Hemisphere. We'll start in Venezuela on a group of islands within the Atours Rapids where large petroglyphs complement the surrounding hillscape. Large figures and animal carvings as large as 100 feet in length, visible especially well from aerial photography, truly encapture the artistic talent of the culture responsible. The petroglyphs are at least 2,000 years old, and the site at Cerro Pintado has been known about for hundreds of years. If we leave Venezuela heading southwest, eventually we'll make it to Peru where in Cantalima, the Chekta petroglyphs cover an area of roughly 26,000 square feet, or 8,000 square meters. There are hundreds of images here carved into more than 100 individual rocks. No one is quite sure how old the carvings are, but it's safe to assume that they are over 1,500 years old. The function of the petroglyphs is also somewhat of a mystery. Speculation of their purpose ranges from territory marking to a ritualistic function. In a sad turn of events, over half of the rocks have been vandalized in some way or another, from being moved from their point of origin to graffiti marks. This site is currently listed as endangered, and if we want to be able to learn more about the history of the location and the rocks within it, we have to take steps to protect the area, so no goofballs allowed. Brazil is a very large country, at about 87% the size of the United States. In the northeastern region of Brazil, there's a national park called the Serra de Capavera, the rock art here is expansive and amazing, featuring human figures hunting, engaging in sexual acts, and dancing. As well as people, the wildlife shares a large portion of the paintings. You can find jaguars, lizards, armadillos, and even an extinct type of ostrich. There are over 1,000 archaeological sites within the park, and some of the art is dated to around 
25,000 years ago. However, some believe the very oldest art to be even older, by nearly 10,000 years. The climate of this location ensures that the rock art remains in pristine condition, and nearly half a billion years ago, this area was completely underwater. Argentina is also a hotbed of ancient culture and rock art. Take La Cueva de las Manos, or the Cave of Hands, for instance. Located in the valley of the Pinturas River, the rock art here dates back nearly 10,000 years. It is believed that three distinct styles of art are present, indicating that different types of people inhabited the caves at different times. Scenes of hunting, as well as handprints, litter the ancient place, the first of which were discovered in 1949. Australia, a continent 90% the size of Brazil, while only hosting about one-eighth the population. Australia has the third largest subtropical desert in the world, the Great Victoria Desert, at about 250,000 square miles, or over 400,000 square kilometers, and has the largest living marsupial species as a resident, the red kangaroo. Let's start in Western Australia, where some of the highest concentrations of indigenous rock art in the world are located. Our first stop is Mirujuga National Park on the Barup Peninsula. Some of the art here is more than 40,000 years old and even depicts extinct creatures like thylacines and a fat-tailed species of kangaroo. Much of the rock art is related to local animals, but in Western Australia alone, there are more than a million pieces of ancient art. Before the first known instances of rock art here, the natives were around for at least 10,000 years already. Paintings and engravings on stones are not the only form of art that can be dated to such ancient times. Much like Stonehenge in England, Aboriginal megalithic art also exists but they predate the construction of Stonehenge. Today, about 90% of Australia's total sites with cultural significance similar to this one are being protected and are included in the World Heritage Site Catalog. Another region in Western Australia, the Kimberley, has rock art made through multiple different mediums, such as engravings, applying paint to rocks, marking the stones, arranging stones in certain ways, and applying resins and beeswax to the rocks. The oldest rock art here is dated back to over 40,000 years ago and includes animals, plants, and people. The indigenous population could have been around as far back as 60,000 years, but the rock art in the Kimberley region wasn't discovered until the late 1890s. Moving on from Western Australia, we enter the Quincan Reserve in Queensland. Here, some of the art dates back over 20,000 years, and UNESCO puts this location as one of the top 10 in the world. Animal figures and human-like spirit beings call the rocks that they are stationed on home. However, the region, like many other ancient art sites, is at major risk due to vandalism, such as mining and graffiti. The last location in Australia is Kakadu National Park in Northern Australia, where the rock art could date back further than 60,000 years. Older paintings here show a kind of x-ray art where you can see the insides of certain animals. There are even depictions of when European settlers came to Australia. In Kakadu alone, there are at least 5,000 art sites, and some of the tools the indigenous people used to create the art included human hair as the brush portion. Visitors often leave feeling emotional, and others leave with goosebumps, but when you're staring at the knowledge and the perspective from hundreds of generations before you, it's not hard to understand why. Europe. 
abundant with some of the most universally recognizable works of architecture such as the Elizabeth Tower, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, Stonehenge, the Eiffel Tower, and the everlasting Colosseum of Rome. The Eiffel Tower isn't the only historic site you should know about in France. The Lusco Cave is actually a complex of chambers that was utilized by ancient Europeans over 15,000 years ago. They weren't discovered until 1940, but when the cave system was found, nearly 1,000 drawings of animals touched the hearts of the explorers. The caves are closed off to the public due to the exposure and contact taking a toll on the preservation process. But nonetheless, these aesthetic masterpieces have withstood the test of time and give us a glorious glimpse into cultures of the past in stunning beauty. Entering one of my family's home countries, Italy, more specifically though, in Verona, lies a cave known as the Grotta di Fumane. This is one of the oldest shelters on earth used by prehistoric humans, dating back just shy of 60,000 years. There is immense archaeological interest in this particular location because there is anatomical evidence of both Neanderthal and Homo sapien use throughout the ages. You can find ancient remains of animals, objects of everyday use, evidence of fireplaces, ancient drawings of animals, as well as scenes of hunting. Spain also has a rich ancient history to explore. Take for instance the caves of Monte Castillo and Puente Viesco. The art here is around 40,000 years old, but occupation of these caves dates back at least 150,000 years. Discovered in 1903, there are over 150 pictures that decorate the cave walls where you can find animals such as horses, bison, goats, and even mammoths. Handprints also give an exceptional aura of eeriness as you venture through humanity's beginnings. Our last European stop is in Bulgaria, to the Magira Cave, where the paintings are scribbled with the excrement of flying mammals called guano. I guess you can say the occupants here were batshit crazy. <laughs> Nonsense aside, the paintings date back nearly 10,000 years, and the cave hosts one of the oldest known sun calendars in all of Europe. There are over 750 paintings here, depicting scenes of hunting, ceremonies, ancient deities, and even a hallucinogenic mushroom belonging to the genus Baletus. Prehistoric people weren't the only ones to call this cave home. Ancient bears, foxes, wolves, cats, and even otter bones have been found in the deep chambers. Touristing hooligans can't help but vandalize the walls by etching their own names into it. Earlier this year, there was an incident but I hope that the Bulgarian government doesn't close the cave off to the public. Instead, recommendations of CCTV are being suggested to the higher-ups. And last, but not least, North America. You may not often associate Mexico, the United States, and Canada with having much of an ancient history, but while researching this topic, even I was a bit surprised. The Hopi people are originally from Mexico, but over 1,000 years ago, they split off into four groups, one of which entered Canada. Today, you can find remnants of their existence in the petroglyphs they've scattered near Grotto Canyon in Alberta. Human figures can be seen on rocks, some believed to be images of healers, others are presumed to be flute players. Some rocks depict animals, but unfortunately, weathering has been the primary enemy of the ancient art here. There are trails you can hike to encounter the petroglyphs, but seriously, no touchy. 
south of the United States in Nayarit, Mexico, you can find a spectacular site of rock art and stone carvings at the Alta Vista petroglyph complex. It's difficult to say who exactly created them, but they are believed to be thousands of years old. Archaeologists are under the impression that these carvings were made to connect with supernatural energies. The art portrays weather events such as lightning, large faces, human figures, intricate designs, and even what appears to be crops. Our last destination, the good old US of A, houses the final two entries on this list. The first is in Nevada, where possibly the oldest rock art in North America can be found. Carved into limestone, the Nevada petroglyphs date back over 10,000 years, but some suggest that they could be over 15,000 years old. The stones have fine lines, diamond shapes, tree and leaf-like patterns, and possibly even flower designs. They were found at the edge of a lake called Winnemucca, which is now dried up, and nobody is certain if the carvings were done all together or over the course of hundreds of years, which adds to their mystical legacy. A popular location for rock art in the U.S., Nine Mile Canyon in Utah is an expanse of land filled with petroglyphs that goes on for about 40 miles. Here you can find agricultural pictures, human figures, scenes of hunting, animal paw prints, goats, buffalo, and at least 10,000 other individual images. The art itself is about 1,000 years old, being made by more than one culture of indigenous people. An increase in industrial activity over the years is putting the artwork at risk. For instance, recently it was suggested to add 800 natural gas wells to the Nine Mile Canyon area. So come on environmental activists, do your thing. If you would like to know more about any of the sites I talked about today, or are interested in additional locations, please take a look at the description of this video where all of my sources and additional unused sources will be available to you. As well, I apologize for any mispronunciations, so sorry. Also, this video was way longer than I thought it was gonna be, but that's okay. Know that the most powerful tool for learning is interest. Let me know what you're interested in. Maybe I'll make a video about it. And thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day.